Alrighty, good evening and welcome. This is Just Fine. And Rivian. So today is open mic. We are going to be without Kanzuki Dynasty for a little bit. So we decided to shake things up a little bit and switch off partners for commentary and see how this works out. So we got some matches here with Omni Rabbit, our resident Laura player. And we're just going to do a standard commentary setup, not aiming to do anything too specific. And since we're in party and not technically looking at the same screen at the same time, we'll have a little uh, transitional kinks to uh, work in. But other than that, it should be completely normal, nothing strange, just basic commentary practice. So with that being said, we got Omni Rabbit vs. Kosku A. Nash to start things off for the evening. So viewing that replay now. Watching Omni Rabbit fight Nashes in general has always given me the feeling that he ends up being pressured into the background too quickly. This is mostly because the way Nash players are playing lately hasn't changed that much from when Nash moved faster. It's just that they're using different buttons to get in. And I think that's helping overall like grapplers in the game. If you stand in my way, I will kill you. Alrighty, and I will be setting up the inputs as we normally do. So I am ready, are you? I'm ready, let's go. Alright, well, jump the back, Sonic. Is that this Nash is the quintessential zoner. But I'm looking at Omni Rabbit's motion here and seeing that he was he was definitely still working on style at this point. This is after his last stream. And he's pushing them to the corner really quickly, which helps a lot. Yeah, and that mistake in the combo earlier cost the Nash a bit of pressure to get out of the corner. But the Moonsault gets him right back out, thankfully. Moonsault is really good at that sort of move because people are expecting it to hit them. They react as if it's aimed to hit them and then don't manage to get a full punish. In fact, one of the things you probably need to train yourself for is to be ready for Moonsaults that are just there to help you get away. That was overall close. The problem with this is mainly that when Nash starts to throw blooms at that particular spacing, there's not a lot Lara can do. And honestly, the Nash seems to be doing a pretty good job of interrupting whatever pressure Omni Rabbit sets up. So there hasn't been any explosive damage or meaty setups going on his side. That's why I'm not too worried about Nash, at least against Raptors going into the next patch. Because if you have the hard reads that you've managed to frustrate the Raptor player and they're coming in <coughs> absolutely determined to hit you with the command grab, you're gonna get EX on its edge. And since it can't be crushed countered, and Raptors don't tend to have really huge Ooh, combos Ooh, nice anyway. sweep! Yes, that was well spaced. And that, yeah, that made it a little anticlimactic. <laughs> oh well. We're gonna see a lot more of that probably going forward, but I think the main thing to note about that match was the Nash reached a point where he started to just throw booms from the corner. And I think that it's very important for a player to know exactly how far their own V reversal reaches in this sort of situation because that could actually decide whether or not you can quote-unquote get back in on it. Alrighty, moving on to match number two.
But as I was saying before, I think that it's a very high chance that given what most grapplers do to get big damage in this game, if the opponent is not too heavy on meter, I would just let myself go for the E at Sonic Scythe because it can't be crush countered. Which means that since grapplers spend most of their time doing damage based on their meter or a throw, if I'm feeling that I'm caught in a mix-up and I'm about to get thrown, then if I Sonic Scythe and I miss, then I haven't lost anything. If I was baited, I haven't lost anything. Alright, setting up inputs. And beginning. Okay, let's go. Alright. Coast Q seems to be putting on a little more pressure than last round. He probably felt that he needed to adapt that way, but the rabbits got a good concept of the space right. When he's in the middle of the screen, it's not too hard to control Nash. I don't think I would have used that meter there. Mm. But now this is the situation I referred to. They're both basically running without meter. Yeah, I'm not sure I would have dashed in at the point where he did to get the throw, but it seemed to come out in his favor in the end. He's been having much more success away from close quarters, which honestly isn't Nash's strong suit. He normally uses the zoning to set up situations where he can get in block strings. At least at this level of play. I find that Nash is basically a block string character all the time. I mean, Bonchan has different ways around it, and Bonchan is now the only person we can talk about. But... <laughs> They're definitely Nash is definitely not specifically a pressure character, but he uses box strings to control space, and this Nash is doing an incredibly Oof. good job of that. And that armor was just not enough for Ami Rabbit. Nash wins. Because he knew that was going to happen actually. He knew he knows if he frustrates someone enough with this playstyle they'll just get flustered and have to stop. Especially a character who has no anti-fireball tools, really, who more or less must get in. It can get pretty discouraging. The other good thing is that Kosuke seem to understand that if you go to the other side of the screen altogether against Lara and start to throw booms, you won't actually get away with it because it gives her too much time to charge up a clap and follow it. And then you have to worry about whether or not you can get Moonsaw off in time to make her uncomfortable. Alrighty, so moving on to Keleth, the Urian, as my co-hosts have been telling me that I've been pronouncing Urian's name wrong. So this will be an exercise in correcting some pronunciation for me. Although I am a fan of calling him Julian. That, that works out for me. <laughs> I don't think his character somehow would have felt as intimidating as he could be if they hadn't actually called him Yuri. And if they had translated the name as Julian, mm, I don't know, maybe I just don't have the required mental associations to find the name Julian terrifying. <laughs> Fair enough. But the we are seeing that once again pausing the for levels of the key display characters are very similar in terms of rank points. So ready when you are. Alrighty, let's go. So once again we have a character whose job is basically to put some distance between himself and Lara. And I'm watching Omni Rabbit's motion here and wondering why he's pushing as hard as he does. Yeah, and this Urian definitely doesn't seem keen on getting up close and personal, so... Or at least not for very long. 
tends to do so and then push, and once it pushes over, back off. We actually see this when Omni Rabbit is training with the Cosmic Wolf because it's been noted that you can't actually do anything to Urian when he jumps back with Lava. But unlike other characters, him jumping back doesn't mean that you've gained any advantage. Getting in on him isn't. You can't trap Urian in the first place. Right, Not his limbs Lava. are just way too long. And if you've decided, oh, I'm going to throw Slap at you in the corner, then you really can just aid his survivor. But uh, the pressure Ooh, here is not so terrible. Nice throw. Ooh. So what I would like to see a lot more of here is actually cheat <coughs> or crouching light kick. Crouching medium kick would also be good, but the timing for them tends to be a little bit off. These fake sure, out headbutts it, are yeah, letting him get away with it. really weird spacings. I kind of want to see more of that just because it messes with Omri Rabbit so much. <laughs> and headbutt in general is just a nice move for closing in a lot of space without much downside to it. Well, what I'm seeing the most of as a problem here is. Getting hit by jabs when close up, which is odd. Because Yurian really isn't that. His jab is four frames, and he's not very pressure intensive as a character. So the question is is this a matchup thing? Is this something that one uses against Lara specifically? Because I can think of a reason why you would. Lara is really able to push Yurian back and get some, not full on setups, but close the distance while Urien is on the ground and force him to react. And she can do that with her V reversal. But if you're using lights at that range, it's unlikely that you'll get away with it. So it's entirely possible that that was planned. Alrighty, round two. <clears throat> okay, let's load that up. I suppose that this round will tell us so because we will definitely see more of it. It's not a common thing, in my opinion, to see Urian just do crouching jab twice because while it does obviously lead into just about anything he wants it to, it's not a particularly good way to space yourself against most people. It doesn't give you any jump in, it doesn't give you neutral jump, it doesn't really give you anything. In fact, if you just block, you're probably fine. So we're gonna have to see why it is that he considers this a good idea. And I almost right. wish I had seen more of their stuff. Setting up inputs. Okay. And ready. one thing I'm gonna be looking for is if he wakes up with EX headbutt again, because it looks like this uh, Urian definitely has noted that Omni Rabbit doesn't have a response to Headbutt, but Omni Ra Rabbit has not been acting as if the Urian will wake up with Headbutt. And I think that's going to put him in a lot of bad situations. So, let's okay. get started. Okay. Well, we see Clap. Clap is a good thing to be using early in the round. Definitely, it helps push him back. If you get the multi-hit one, he can't use his armor. Ooh, that B-skill headbutt. That was so perfect. <laughs> yeah, right through. So once again, we're seeing a couple jabs. Yep, jab, medium, medium. Now there, I don't think that he... That is actually not technically a proper block. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> Let's see if that EX command grab spent a little liquid courage there. Looks like he's... Omni Rabbit is approaching a little more confidently. But well, the difficulty is always that until Urian is changed, he definitely does have the advantage in this range because it's too easy for him to hit crouching light kick and crouching medium. And honestly, Urian can just suck out the uh, momentum out of these sorts of situations. Because his buttons are so long, he can just stop you from continuing your assault really easily. Mm -hmm. 
And Metallic Spear does not help either. But inching forward he helpful. goes. So let's see if Omni Rabbit can land the finishing blow. The problem with the inching forward method of doing this, especially with this much life, and such a defensive play on both sides, is that eventually you're going to end up frustrating <coughs> yourself just like that. It would probably have been better to just go outright for the overhead and hope it works. Yurin doesn't have a lot of quick responses to her overhead. You would have to block it and then if you space yourself right, you'll be safe. Ooh. And now he's getting more aggressive with chariot tackles as well. This is not looking good. Yeah, we're definitely seeing the double jab into headbutt, double jab into back kick, which is probably also a headbutt intentionally. Urien wins. You know, I think That's this is the of... first Ur Urien that <laughs> uses V skill really well. I don't even think I've seen his V skill used at higher levels by like. Li Joe or Nemo, really? I think Dogura is the only one who actually uses the V skill, and he doesn't yeah, necessarily do it that often. Dogura, either. Dogura thinks in the Guilty Gear mindset, so well, yes, there's that. He'll he'll try to exploit and use his gimmicks as much as possible. <laughs> All right, so a guy named Marco. Really, I is thought it was Vega. Oh, okay. Well, let's see what a guy named Marco has to say for himself. I should make a polo joke, but I'll be good. I'm sure there will be plenty of polo jokes to come. Once again, we are seeing people with very, very similar rank points, which is good. Yeah, this was in casuals, this... wasn't it? Yes, and this Vega is also level 39, so they're not even that far apart in terms of level. We should be expecting, in other words, really good Vega play overall. Let my beauty intoxicate you. Round one. Fight. All right, setting up inputs. Ready? Let's go. Now. I like I like walking in after the clap, but you should probably let the clap be in front of you. I mean, Vega has a lot of ways to deal with this. <laughs> yeah, those long pokes are pretty hard to deal with if you don't have some way to punish him for it. But he Especially can slide. As a he literally could just slide if you're walking forward at him. If he expects that you're going to do it, what are you going to do? Hmm. You know, I don't think I've seen a Vega use slide effectively enough to say, so... Why did that work? <laughs> that did not look like it should have worked. Why did he neutral jump the fireball? That made no sense. Well, it could be that it's difficult to know, and maybe this Vega has to play a lot of lava plays. Maybe they are playing to win. They are in casual though aren't playing to win. They are in casuals after all. They might have decided, hey, I should see what range this works at. Maybe. Ooh, good luck. But the rabbit is still managing to put on some good pressure here. You know, I oh, think no, this is a match... Is the last one. I think this is a match where he'd be better without the claw. It's Given... hard to say though, because what does Lara really do that Vegas Pokes don't eat? Hmm. I think it just makes his Barcelona grab a little better, but if he doesn't want to use those, then yeah, maybe Claw's a little better. And that was easy to see coming. But using all your resources to close that out, well, I suppose the option was potentially losing, so... Yeah, we haven't been seeing any of the poking pressure to keep Omni Rabbit out from this Vega.
Oh, he was a little bit too far off there. Rabbit capitalizes quite well, but... I can say that there's one part of it where what you said is definitely true. Since he is able to command grab when he doesn't have the claw on, it basically should make the Lara player stop using Light Elbow. At least most of the time. Because all the pressure from Light Elbow goes away if the opponent has the option to command grab or slide or do other things. Yeah, I don't know what the Vega was thinking at that point. Lara he seemed a little skittish overall. But there was no real reason for him to be. Well, there's always the strong possibility of not knowing the matchup. As much as Lara is quite popular overall at <coughs> in certain places and at high levels, the way the character is polarizing, especially now, you might not see as many of them as you think. I don't. Def I definitely don't see that many Lara, despite all of the talk we've been getting recently. Hmm. Well, on to the next match. You know, now that you mm -hmm. mention it, I don't think I've fought another Laura other than Omni Rabbit in the last month. <laughs> Not for a lack of playing either. Well, it is definitely that a character who uses a lot of setups and you have to actually learn all those setups can be pretty frustrating to play if you don't have some tool that makes you feel safe. She has no invincible reversal. She has a very complicated form of neutral. Even though it's relatively effective, you still have to learn a lot of it. Doesn't her so EX bolt people... function as a as a wake up option though? Mm, not against proper meetings though. Or is it not frame because one? Not frame one. Yeah. Oh okay. I thought it was frame one armor. All right. I forgot to turn on the inputs. So hold on a sec here. Alrighty, you ready? Ready. Round one. Fight. Alrighty, a little bit of dancing. Ooh, nice anti air from Omni Rabbit. Hmm. But now that I see him, he's still pushing in ways that mostly rely on the opponent not jumping out, which seems strange because, I mean, Vega would definitely be a character that would like you to jump out. Yeah, I think the lack of Barcelona is making his jump-ins not really safe and too predictable. Got the combo, but still clicks him out. Well, I'm definitely starting to agree with you that, in, at least for this matchup, if I see a Lara that does this much light elbow, I am definitely putting the claw away. It is useful enough to poke with, but he doesn't poke with it that much. Ooh, nice grab. And the read on the flat jump. <laughs> what? That was insane. There you go, got some wall dive pressure going here. He seems a little more confident now. I'm not sure you should be though. Again with he neutral jumping again. the fireballs, I just... He needs to learn not to do that. <laughs> not at but that range. But there you that round is at least part of the reason why that's done. Perhaps he's used to Lara's that dash after the fireballs. Maybe. That could be very possible. There you go, now we got a Barcelona. <laughs> but Ani Rabbit's no. anti-airs are on point. Lara's very powerful in terms of anti-airs from the front. And I doubt that 
Marco wants to go over and risk the being cornered, being caught in another setup. Any number of things. The problem with not doing it is that he ends up sitting on his meter for way too long. Yeah. He really likes the V trigger CA combo, I think. The rabbit's under pressure now, needs to not specifically get in, but make Marco more nervous. Because giving Vagal his space just means that eventually... Oh, and that was a beautiful EX Barcelona. And Omni Rabbit just went for pressure when it wasn't really his turn. I'd say that was an overall problematic match on both sides. That match that gives you the feeling that both players know what they're what they should do, but they also know that the other player can counter them and therefore they are hesitant to do it. Alright. On to the final a guy named Marco match. Okay. What we didn't see a lot from Marco is any form of roll, but it's not really clear why. It could be that they spent a lot more time in neutral than is best for doing... Doing a roll might not be the best thing to do when you're spending that much time in neutral, but I would figure that he'd capitalize harder once he actually got the knockdown. Hmm. Well, Omni Rabbit stopped doing Round Light one. Bolt, Fight. and he kept the claws on, so he seems to be fairly aware of when that's advantages to him, or is just getting stupidly lucky. Alright, key displays are set. Are you ready? Let's go. So now we're seeing more clap, which is again, okay, but not if you want to walk behind it. It's especially there for with a shield. Right. Especially with as long poke buttons as Vega has. Well, actually, because of the hitboxes, the clap will keep out all but one of Vega's buttons. Namely the slight. The problem being that if you walk forward behind the clap, then he will slide at you. And slide is safe if it hits Oof. on the last frames. That grab. Yeah. That Interrupting grab basically killed any hope of pressure reversing at this point. Fortunately, it really doesn't seem as if Marco is likely to slide the clap. Oh! That was... I want to call it dirty, but it was more so just knowing when your opponent is not going to react in there. Well, Marco's been getting Omni Rabbit to think about the slide enough that I think it's affecting Omni Rabbit's play at least a little bit. Well, we saw the roll and then into the throws, into the shimmy. And the rabbit is just. Yeah. It's always a sad feeling to get taken apart that way. Because giving yourself more space doesn't solve the problem at all. If anything, the mindset that comes up when you're in that situation, trying to get yourself out of the situation is just as bad as randomly mashing buttons. Because your opponent's definitely expecting both of those things, and if they're good, they have like a sequence that covers one and, and then the other. So... I think in the end, though, Marco just adapted a little quicker than Omni Rabbit. It really does make me wonder what exactly the tools to be used there are. But the other thing that sort of confused me about that match is Omni Rabbit. How to put this? I don't understand why Omni Rabbit stopped using Light Bolt. 
It seemed to sort of just naturally happen, and then he never came back to it. So Marco never had to keep thinking about it in the end. Hmm. Well, if anything, I'd say it's probably because of people don't necessarily track when Vega's claw has been knocked off, and it's like a form of meter watching. You have to know when to let Vega get away. That's all. All right, on to Pinto JP. Okay then, Pinto, huh? I wonder if that has a meaning other than the car. Well, obviously the word has a meaning, but why would or you call yourself the bean? I guess I don't know. I guess. <laughs> so this player is actually in one the lower part of silver somewhat in a level 34 view they've been in here a while though that's at least hmm. 750 points so at least that's how you start the fight and finish it quickly at least 10 matches or so into it at least. round 1 fight Alrighty, so setting up key display. Ready? And let's go. And beginning with a successful neutral jump. Ooh, the dance worked. I would not have expected that one in particular to work at that range. It's not quite a shimmy. It's something that grapplers use to make the opponent think that they're going to not try to hit them. Because you're expecting grabs. And here comes some decent pressure. Speaking of beans, this person is definitely a jumping bean. To the point where he was able to hit with the... Oh, that was so not supposed to be an ant here. That's like ant hearing someone speak. You know you oh. jumped in wrong when your opponent ant hears you with speak. <laughs> yeah... Overall, I have no idea what this person is doing. Nor what they are thinking. But Ryo looks like he's got a nice view there, so... The problem is, I would say it's weird because that match was really close, relatively speaking. Almost I think, oddly close. I think Omni Rabbit's just unprepared to handle somebody who jump, jumps this much. Especially on a Ryu. I mean, Ryu doesn't have that great of jumping buttons. Mm, they're good enough that it would justify this sort of behavior, which is where the Ryu bot thing I was mentioning yesterday comes in. But the part of it that is confusing me is not so much the jumping. Because you can really put this to good use. Especially with his jumping heavy kick and this particular sequence of jumping through and throwing. Because his jumping heavy kick, while it cannot cross up, is super ambiguous a lot of times and will block out a lot of attacks. So you can't just do whatever you want. The problem being that he can't actually do anything else when he's gotten into that mode. Yeah, his jumping light kick is pretty good rushdown. All right. On the rabbits adjusted to anti-air mode, so maybe we'll see a little more effectiveness here. That was perfectly done. And that was also perfectly done. Whether or not he read the fact that his opponent was feeling pressured and near stunned can't really be said, but overall it worked out. So my point here would be I knew that, that either that was going <laughs> to happen or I would have had to scold the Omni Rabbit later for bothering to chase the Ryu at all. But noticing that they had gotten into that mode of jumping and hitting that button V-trigger and use Lara's incredible lightning speed to close the distance to get that done. Yep, and that's I exactly really what Lara's V-trigger is for. That exact moment. That moment when you know that punk is going to keep jumping back. Yeah, that is the exact moment to use it. So on to round two from Mr. Jumping Bean. The question is whether or not he even has another strategy that he intends to be using. 
Because we haven't seen many fireballs. We haven't seen many combos. We haven't seen much of anything, honestly. Now, this is okay because given their data, it doesn't... It's not strange that they fight this way. But rather that normally when someone chooses to do this, it's a matchup thing. So if it's shown to them that this doesn't work against this player in this matchup, do we see a denotation? All right. Key display set up. Ready? Let's go. And in and with a jump forward. No. <laughs> no, no. Be a little more credit here. He jumped forward this time, not backward. Well, I suppose. Ooh, that had to hurt. It looks like he's Let trying to do fireballs. Not very well, but... A traded... Well, fireball game against Lara can be kind of difficult. Yeah, that's true. But... It would have at least given him a little more breathing room to maybe psych Omni Rabbit out a little bit with his jumps, but... I think the key moment there for that match was one that will become even more important moving forward. After an error reset, Lara probably has to go for a grab, a command grab. Now, when the opponent has no meter, this is usually safe, but moving forward, Light Shore you can go usually be enough. It's fast enough, you have to be perfect on your timing. And if you try to throw, it will be throw invincible and you will have no way out of it. So, congratulations to the Shoto crew on now having a better way out of air reset. And more reasons to jump against love. And... Your fireball think... timing is just... Jump timing is just not that great. <laughs> Honestly, though, I don't understand how it's still so effective when you could really just focus on neutral jumping a lot of this, even with the trigger on the... Hmm. It is a little bit hard to understand the specific thought pattern that goes into jumping forward over fireballs. Especially with Ryu in the trigger. I don't think I generally do much of that, but it could be easy enough to get your mind on Nice it. fake shimmy from Ami Rabbit. This is just the usual Lara level shutdown. Yep. The Mika level shutdown, if you will. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Because honestly, especially with this particular Ryu, if you get him in the corner, he has nowhere to jump back to. So, and jumping over Laura is not usually the smartest thing to do. It can work no, if you have the right buttons. No, it's usually the worst possible but... idea. It is usually the worst possible idea. Alrighty, so moving on to Byakuya. Byakuya. Yeah. Yabuki. Yabuki. Six. Not just <laughs> any. Not just the original. The, uh, yeah. <laughs> the sixth incarnation. Anyway, rush down. No. We're just practicing our commentary a little bit. So, nothing too fancy. We're scrubby, we know. So, any uh, comments you have on that in particular, we'd be more than happy to listen to. So we've got the Ibuki who is supposedly around the same rank as Pinto. But this and... isn't just any Byakuya. This is a genius True. Byakuya. <laughs> but we don't necessarily know that. Maybe the first five times it didn't work out that well. Hmm. Either way, one thing we know to be true is that the Ibuki matchup is something that Ami Rabbit only knows in terms of the low damage version. In other words, his training partner for this does not know how to throw out massive amounts of damage. 
or bombs. All right. Well, Key display is set. You ready? Let's go. And that was an opening. Actually, I'm beginning to think that opening is legit. And there is some damage indeed. And oh, cross under, cross over, cross up. However, they don't seem to have the defense per se, and they are oh clearly <laughs> not liking to just block. And then they switch automatically to just blocking. This is something I've seen in a lot of players. It's easy to make the defensive or offensive mindset swing in players around this level. They're good, but they have usually brought that with them from the bronze tier. Of they're either on the attack or on the defense, and their mind doesn't switch that quickly. Alrighty, a good command dash from the Abuki. But these are holding here well, on both sides. Now that the uh, and there's... now that a boogie doesn't try to get in as much, it seems to be working out. Yes. That first round, the abuki was just being bananas, though. Nice kunai recharge and a kill. So. We do have to ask why one would do the ES clap at that range. Yeah. It seemed like a strange choice. I would probably save my meter for EX Bolt in this matchup, especially given how buttons heavy this Ibuki is. Well, there's the EX Bolt. Yeah, and but. The air. So, but the perfect V cancel and good defense after it. The problem is that once you've got yourself there, now you have no more V-Trigger and you have no more V-Reversals, so you have to stand there and take all the pressure because once you're in Ibuki's lock strings, it's very unlikely that you can do anything about it with your meter. Without a character that has something invincible outright, you're gonna get stuck like that. And what part of what makes her one of the best characters recently is that you really can't get away from her in that way. Everyone else, you have to at least be afraid that your opponent will do something like instant jump, light kick, or something, depending on their character. But Ibuki will shut you down regardless of that. Alrighty, on to round two. Rushdown notes really in that after light bolt hit, you can do crouching light kick into crouching light punch cancel into light bolt. Hmm. So it does slightly more damage and acts as a low hit. I thought it only worked when light bolt hit at max range and therefore on one of the two later active frames, but... You're the one with the frame data for Lara open, I believe, so... <laughs> Between the next match, you can probably give that a check. I mean, it's not that I dealt it in any way, but... It seems they're almost too easy. Mm, Rushdown says it always works. Alright, key display... Okay. is on. You ready? Let's go. We'll leave that sort of thing to the rabbit to figure out for himself. <laughs> All right. So what I don't like here from Omni Rabbit is that he's trying to use buttons in neutral that will definitely get him hit by Konai. And I know that this is before Ibuki has the X meter, but it's not good to start off like that either. It doesn't stop her from doing any particular thing, and you might just not get out of the habit in time. You can't afford to leave yourself like that because if she capitalizes the moment she actually gets meter, you're going to take a lot of damage. Good V reversal you should from Omni Rabbit though. I know you've been working on that, so good job. Well you did stop, so there is that. Now getting in on 
getting in on them at this point, it to me it just seems like a bad idea altogether. Just leave her. Like there's literally no reason to do anything. Yep. What I would have probably done when I had more health was just move in far enough to do something like that. Or if I thought they were gonna react because I ended up dashing and they back dashed a lot, just go straight for EX Bolt and hope it whiffed all together. This is a meter watching exercise thing. This match is very heavily dependent on who has meter at what point to know exactly what their options are because their options interact a lot more than the options of other characters. Nice command grab. Honestly, I haven't seen that much uh, EX Kunai pressure from the Ibuki, which I think is making it easier for Omni Rabbit to get in on her. Possibly true, but again, it's really about that sort of moment right there. <laughs> because these two characters interact in such specific ways based on how much meter each of the one of them has, it is more so in Nibuki's interest to push the Lara player mentally and look for the moment they can do it, because Ibuki must go close to Lara in order to do damage. And Lara's defense isn't great, but once she starts to push you back, then it's hard to get away from her. Alrighty, on to the final match of Byakuya 6. There's definitely a lot to learn there in terms of interactions between Ibuki and Lara based on me. In fact, this is even more important for the Mika versus Ibuki matchup because Mika also has to take into account the space she's at. If she armors through Ibuki's kunai, it depends where she was when she started, and that determines who wins out. Alrighty, setting up inputs. Ready when you are. Please proceed, Governor. <laughs> We're seeing the beginning of footsies here, but the usual Omni Rabbit level defense. Not for a lack of oh, trying, though. That was quite an early use of the reversal, but I think it was actually a really good idea. Yeah, his V reversals have been on point in this matchup. Just use them to just get yourself out of corners sometimes, too, so. That is a trick that one has to get used to against the boost quite a lot. Continual use of V skill into dash. If that is phased correctly, it is extremely difficult to respond to the dash because the range at which the B skill is effective, it's also the exact range at which you don't know which size she will end up on based on which dash she used. But you can't just neutral jump because you might get used to it. I'm not sure about this use of sweep on the boogie side. But Omni Rabbit will put it to sleep if they continue to use it. Um, oh, that was either missed input or a very, very heavy read. Yeah. But it's not a read I'd be willing to make against Ibuki. I mean, she doesn't like staying on the ground in the first place. Especially since, as you said, this match is really meter dependent. If anything, I would say that was the biggest problem I'd have with it. I would be, a, I would be terrified of using all my meter and then the Ibuki running out the clock or something equally ridiculous and just randomly dying. But it looks like the neutral jump has saved the day. 
Yeah, and yeah, I'm not really like sure about the Ibuki using as short a timer as they did on their bomb either. Hmm. Because you generally want to use the longer version when you're doing it just as to throw it out and do space control, right? Generally, also, I think they must have realized by now that it's not as easy to break Omni Rabbit's defense. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that I agree with you and I would have gone for a longer time around the bomb, but... Muscle memory is a thing. Mm. They've been really Person good at can... working in their kunai recharge, though. Oh, they got clipped. <laughs> and that was why it was useful, because they got clipped because they couldn't be sure if it was okay time to hit a button, because that was the exact situation I described before. Lara having the life lead, enough meter to EX bolt, and you either have to hit a button or get out of the way. But because her forward heavy punch also goes about as far, if you do the getaway wrong, down you'll go. Alrighty, on to something completely different. Bebok the Guile. The French Guile. Nonsense. Guile is never anything other than a true-blooded American. Uh -huh. Guile could be French-American. You've seen his hair. Mm, I suppose he does have Polnareff-esque uh, inclinations and hairstyle, but no. <laughs> Sorry about it. So, I actually talked to Omni Rabbit about this particular match this weekend because we were looking through if I needed to do anything to Guilebot to make this sort of thing happen less. So I have quite a bit of advanced knowledge of this match, whereas I hadn't seen any of the others before now. But I've watched this match, and I know exactly what happens, and we're still working on exactly why, but yeah. Alrighty. Well, setting up the inputs on my side. <laughs> Ready. Alright. Off to a standard Guile start. So... Whoa! That clipping with from the, uh... Ah, man. Totally spaced the move name. Oh well. Flash yes. kick. Flash kick. kick yes. Yes. Damn. We're going with flash kick. Well, that's why we're practicing. So as you can see, he got held out almost entirely. Yeah, this matchup is not very good say. for Omni Rabbit, generally. I don't well, think this is. No, actually, that was the key point. And we'll probably discuss this one again toward the end of the commentary part of the stream because of it. But you've played against Galbot, you understand what the game of Galbot is. And you see him attempting it. Get close enough to clip his legs with crouching medium kick and see if you can combo off. And when he manages it, it's not terrible, it works really well. This particular dial, though, is good at keeping a very specific space. And Galbot has no access to that particular forward kick that he's been using. I was actually considering should oh, I give man. it to him for precisely this reason. You can just feel the tenseness when both the Guile and Omni Rabbit are down backing and just staring at each other. <laughs> Because Ami Rabbit, when Guile has charge, Ami Rabbit really just can't do anything about it. Laura just. I mean, Laura does have tools for that sort of situation, but Ami Rabbit in particular, I know, gets really nervous in that sort of situation. Well, that's why you spent about an hour with Galbot this weekend. <laughs> As well, I said, we'll get back to that. Yeah. On to round two. 
But the key point we should look at from the Gal side is the specific method of motion they use. That specific type of motion has so many useful things for picking off people who easily get flustered because it looks a little bit like teabagging even though technically it's really just him respacing himself while continuing to keep his back charge. But you could get someone pretty mad and then destroy them terribly. I don't think it's quick enough to be read as that, but maybe that's just me as a charge character user. It's quite Alrighty. likely. Key display on. Okay, let's go. Even if yeah. you don't view it as teabagging, it has a specific rhythm to it that he glides so incredibly smoothly, even in the animations, that it feels off when he does it. You know what though? Yeah, I I'm with you. It's really smooth. But Finu says that it looked like teabagging because of the rollback. So who I knows? Think I find that very interesting, using the uh, V trigger to cross over your opponent to put them on the uh, worst side of the battlefield. He was looking for that sunset wheel for a long time. And I can see why he didn't risk doing it through the actual V trigger either. You have to be a bit more ready for that, and if the girl is safe correctly, you'll just end up dying. So I'm the type that would risk it a lot of the time regardless. Spacing his heavy kick really well. Actually, I think that's forward medium. No, oh, is it? Yeah, but I got totally confused and forgot that forward heavy kick is actually the upside down kick. I did not remember it that way, even though I built the bot. And there we have the moment when it is not faced directly and the result of it not faced directly. While not a ton of damage is probably a drop in morale. Final round. Fight. Yeah, I can kind of tell in this specific match that Omni Rabbit switched mindsets a little bit and is looking for a very specific opening. The problem is it's Guile. There's no openings. Yeah, that's also true. The character is designed to be like that even down to the nuances of his frame. And Lara has, as you just saw, no ability to pressure him with Clap, because Clap is literally reactable by Guile with Flash. That was basically perfectly done. And that was even better. Because you know that they're going to want to try to use at least a little of this. And at that point, just go right for it. But I... the instant switch to offense and... Mm. Yeah, that's a advantage of Guile. Your ace in the hole can definitely be just dash throw. <laughs> Especially if you play as traditionally defensive as this Guile played. So. I've often wondered if you could actually get something else off of it, but... Mm -hmm. Like, if there's any other button you could use, but given what Guile is like, I don't think so. Because everything you use really is charge, right? So you might as well just dash forward throw because you didn't have time to charge anything else. All right, and down to the final set of matches here. We got Adixer v. Rashid. The other I reason will... is that Giles crouching medium kick is a little bit too slow to get anything off of, and his crouching light kick doesn't give him enough frames to get charged into anything. So yeah, that's why while I wouldn't think that you could necessarily react to it very well, 
just dash throw is the thing that could matter. I've been considering whether or not the Guile bot should have the throw that he does have hidden as a dash throw instead, but he nearly never does it, so I haven't seen any reason to do anything other than putting it as a variant. Putting putting it as a variant might be a good idea, yeah. I am Rashid of the Turbulent Wind. Remember the name well. Round one. Fight. Alrighty. Key display on. Let's go. Immediately I think to myself, this Rashid is going to be a pose. Running into the eagle kick, huh? Yeah. They know the exact spacing to give you stress with the throw. I'm almost curious what makes this Rashid a super silver at the moment. Because they play pretty well. They definitely well, know their character. The way, using this well. particular method with Rashid doesn't work well against Raptors who are willing to just Round randomly three. try to throw you. Fight. You'll note that he hits nearly no... See that, for example. Almost every Grappler in this game, if you give them just the right space, can punish Rashid without doing anything in particular. Because he has a block kick. And because he's not so great at getting out of pressure unless he's willing to spend the meter, you see this sort of thing happen. Huh. Bashy enhanced that. Huh. Doesn't look it. No. It's potentially that they're too predictable. They don't hit any heavy buttons at all. They don't do aerial stuff, and they don't do air eagle spike. Hmm. So, there it is, maybe. But I'd say that one of Rashid's biggest problems is that if you play Rashid predictably, you've lost almost all of your power. I would definitely agree with that. Ooh, got caught. Honestly, I'm not so sure on using the V-Trigger against Omni-Rabbit specifically. Because Omni-Rabbit doesn't really care. And this person doesn't really use it to set up the sort of basic... Like that. He doesn't really use it for the, like, mix-up for throw or a low or whatever that people normally use it for. I'm surprised that with as much meter as he had, that he didn't just jump and do EX equal spike again. Because depending on your timing, you can actually use that with the tornado's power to place you in this position where you can start real mix-ups. But I guess the last of these will show us whether or not he has more tricks up his sleeve after all, or just knows basically those. Yep, moving on to the next. But if you are a Rashid that is predictable against somebody with really good defense, especially like Omni Rabbit has, yeah, I could see why you would still stay at Super Silver. But he does know his character really well, so it's not like he's a bronze level player or anything. Plus, he's also level 408, and we don't technically know if he's like playing Rashid all the time. Though, given the color, uh, I probably think it would be tough. Well, we at least saw a medium, and that looked like what might be okay. We might we might be seeing some at least attempted adaptation. Whether or not they actually have used this before or are good at it, a different question. But yeah, definitely not seeing the same sort of things at all. Here come the heavy buttons and the Rashid foot seat.
But it's difficult to say that they're necessarily ready for or good at this at this point. No, the things he was doing rely on Omni Rabbit being a little more offensive than he is currently playing. A lot of it. It could be simply that pushing, trying to push his buttons this way, make him feel like it is more possible to attack, and then trying to go back to the old style. But that doesn't look like it's working out either, because Omni Rabbit stuff is generally too clean in terms of continual offense. You stand up to him when you have figured out how to get him to keep quiet for long enough for you to catch your breath, but he has enough reads generally that you can't just say, well, I'm going to figure out how to get away from you. And since Addictor has not used a single EX mixer so far, hmm. Yeah, I think that's my one complaint, because what? Well, that's probably why go. they save all that meter, <laughs> but... I would not have that as a standard tactic, for sure. <laughs> because he sat on so much meter for so long. So, he basically wasted meter just by not doing anything with it. Well, it raises the question of whether or not that was a desperation move or a plan. Because now he doesn't have the meter to do anything again. He doesn't seem to be a player that uses a lot of it and therefore needs it to do a lot of things. But... He's basically banking on building that much meter again to get through the situation. But if he doesn't manage to do enough damage by then, it won't matter. But... On the other hand, EX Mixer could get him out of a lot of the situations he's been getting in. And therefore, he wouldn't have to spend three bars to change the tide of the game. And that was just really bad timing on the B-Trigger from Adixer. So overall, Omni Rabbit picked him apart. And there wasn't really too much to see for Omni Rabbit specifically, I mean. I think it would have been very, very dangerous to actually try that there. Because if Laura's moving forward, I think you can just buffer the ES Sunset Wheel. And I... Wait, is that... No, technically that's not a projectile anymore, so she probably doesn't go through it either. No, I don't think so. I got too used to seeing that in Season 1. Did you have some notes for Venushka? For no, the Gal matches? The matches first of all. Yes, let's go back to the Gal matches. All right. Oh, right. Well, switching to those then, if it'll let me. Up oh, there we go. Okay, so let's load up match one against Bibok. And more so, have rather than having notes for him because I mean he basically just came over and we went over this I'm gonna start talking about the things that I knew happened in a different sort of commentary as if the replay came later and you got through a little analysis maybe after talking to the player maybe after thinking through it with the player whatever but yeah I'm gonna start talking about this as with our usual segments with the concept of Galbot in it. Let's do this. Round one. Fight. Uh, right. Round two. Fight. Alrighty. Inputs are on. Let's go. So what I've, what you and I discussed were basically three things that were really important to it, and two things that worked. You'll note that here, being with Punish like that, has a lot to do with advancing on Guile when Guile is not backing off. You shouldn't generally do this. When Guile is standing still, even if he's standing up because he's throwing booms or whatever, you probably shouldn't walk forward at all. And we're seeing a lot of that here. 
But you can start walking forward a lot more as soon as you see him go into that smooth glide because he can only throw booms at that point. And even if you get hit by them and push back out, you eventually get to learn their rhythm. It costs you some health, but you can get it done. Galbot doesn't move backward at all though. And I see no reason to add it to him because then you can't learn that from every person. Every person will glide back or walk back or crouch for different amounts of time. So the Galbot is more so about people learning his basics. The important thing to see here though is that he keeps trying to respond to the kick, even though to him, having again not really encountered it, most of don't use it, this is a foreign piece of information, but still prompts a response. And it's the same response that he was using against other things, which is usually a bad plan. So we see a lot of movement here where there's no way to get in at all. Galbot doesn't really let you do it either. The only reason it works is because eventually Galbot will do something else. But the second part of this that was discussed is actually more important. The purpose of the Galbot is to teach you to also hit confirm off the crouching medium kick if you have a character that can hit confirm off it. And the reason this is so important is because the button you can use to hit confirm it should be the combo that gives you the most advantage against Guile in neutral in the long term. That might not be obvious from the bot itself. So let's load up number two. But overall, that's the same thought. You're thinking to yourself, how do I get oh, in how? on Guile? Apparently... But it's not really about... Apparently, the CFN update has been announced and scheduled for May 30th. And there will be more news on the 25th. So I that includes the balance update and Ed and the new CFN. So that will be interesting. I wouldn't have thought it was a good idea to do it after Combo Breaker, but it does mean that I don't need to go to Combo Breaker and I won't be disappointed that I didn't get to go. Have fun. Well, wait, is that, that's not during Combo Breaker, is it? No, that's like two days out. That's a Tuesday after. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, all right, on to the second uh, Guile match. Sorry for the interruption. Well, I am ready at the input screen. Yeah. Combo Breaker will be sort of anticlimactic, given that. <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's not like Ed was going to be playable anyway, and no one would probably have pulled him out. Except Infiltration, because he's the sort of, sort of weirdo that would do that. It's not like if Ed's that hard to... Ed in top eight. Yes, he would. And it's not like Ed is that hard in terms of the Round things one. that you need to know for this sort of well, tournament play. At least it gives me a good timing for Edbot. So let's continue. Ready? Mm -hmm. Yep, let's go. go. So we see the dash up throw that does the little damage, but Here's the main thing. There's a spacing at which when Guile hits you with a boom at close range, you don't actually have to hit anything else. You just wait a moment or two and then you hit the crouch medium kick anyway. But what we're seeing here is the Omni Rabbit hits the standing medium kick in those situations. And I'm not sure if the Guile was standing at the time, but he probably could have gotten away with it. The other thing he mentioned is that there was some use of Crouching Happy Punch and he just didn't recognize the move overall. This is why it's important to train in different stages and against different costumes. Even lighting can make sense. For some of us, the optical recognition to do certain things can be disrupted by even the lighting in the game. Back in the fight days, this was never a problem, but it can happen to you now. 
for those of us who use audio cues, it can be even worse because you go to tournaments and the characters are in the voice language you don't normally use. All those sorts of things. But right here, he's basically moving in on Guile, but without jumping over the Sonic Boom, which is good because you don't really want to get a flash kick randomly. But right there, once again, you see that he's already at the space where he could just hit the button. And the Guile player spends the time to get him back out from that space, but he doesn't react in time. The bot is, in fact, able to do the same sort of thing, but it just doesn't do it by moving. So you get to learn to do it. The problem is that if you give yourself too long because the bot will stand there, you should generally try to train against Guilebot by hitting as soon as you feel you can. At all. Because the worst that will happen is that it will get blocked. And he has a timing that is based on charge timings almost exactly. So any gal who doesn't spend extra time in the down back position will probably be moving at very similar times. The final part that was really important is that at this time, he didn't have the right move to there. Because the difficulty is, you have to hit confirm it into medium bolt, especially on counter hit, and not into a regular light bolt. Regular light bolt does not give you a knockdown, it does not give Guile a reason to feel threatened or pressured. He is already defending and getting ready to throw you. He doesn't need to feel anything. So right there, that moment, there was no action you could take. Everything had already been used up. And it's hard enough to get meter when you're going in on Guile anyway. So dealing with that directly, dealing with Galbot over the weekend seems to have helped somewhat. There are more advanced techniques that Lara can use, but overall, I'd say that that match wasn't so much a failure of him against Guile, or even a matchup problem per se, but simply insufficient training, really. Yeah. And honestly, it was sort of easy to tell that sort of thing too, because Omni Rabbit hits buttons that don't really seem quite right in response to whatever the Guile did. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, there was just odd moments where he used the, I think it's, what whatever the, uh, I think it's forward medium punch. There's some... The double elbow com is yeah. the forward medium punch, so yes. That's what I mean. I wouldn't feel comfortable using that button in that matchup at all, actually. Right. But I know that Omni Rabbit uses that particular move as a regular part of his game. So that, that that's the sort of thing I was talking about. Ah, I see. Well, that ends Six the commentary portion of the night. <laughs> at least from my side. Yeah, and we're so... at an hour and 18, so it's not... I don't have any other plans at the moment. Especially since I don't personally have access to Colleen Bot. Well, for all viewers watching this, either as last broadcast or anyone that's with us now, as usual, you can find our bots at 2-mk.org. And the discussion we just had leads quite right into it. After all, there was a lot of talk about Galbot, but Galbot is available for you to pick up on site the latest one at any time, and I don't think it's that hard to input either. No, if you want to actually didn't... make more use of it, there's probably enough information in the previous stream about it that you can adapt it to your own needs. Alrighty. So I think that's it for the stream tonight. Thank you for watching. Good night.